So yeah, I want to go talk about why you should write a node, um, namely uh, full node. And uh, I guess I didn't get to go see the show of hands, so I'll just do it one more time. How many people are running a full node right now? All right, you guys can just go. As for the rest of you, well, let's start. I mean, what does a Bitcoin node do? And, you know, a Bitcoin node does a lot of things. And there's actually multiple different types of Bitcoin nodes. First and foremost, a Bitcoin node distributes information around. You know, Bitcoin nodes run on a computer. They connect to other computers. When they see new information about Bitcoin blocks and Bitcoin transactions, they pass it from one node to another. Some nodes only process transactions but blocks. Other, people, other nodes do both. Hypothetically, you could have nodes that do all kinds of stuff, but that's the main types you have. You also have nodes that store archival data and nodes that just store the UTXO set. Some of those nodes, of course, are a lot bigger than others, but again, the really key thing is that this is all about storing data. And then also, there's a separate topic, which I'll get into a bit more detail about the validation of data. Because after all, data by itself isn't enough. You've got to make sure it follows the Bitcoin rules. But this is kind of, I think, where people get confused, which is, you know, this isn't a democracy. Bitcoin nodes by themselves don't vote. And I often see misguided journalists and so on making this kind of statement, such as, you know, such and such soft fork upgrade to Bitcoin is going to go and activate once, you know, 50% of the nodes upgrade. And that's just not how it works. And why that's not how it works really gets down to how Bitcoin works under the hood, which again, the Bitcoin blockchain is just data. You know, it's data that you can validate through proof of work, but it is just data. So most of what a Bitcoin node is spreading that data around. And if I run a Bitcoin node that spreads some data around and you run a Bitcoin node that spreads different data around because you follow different rules, well, people who want to follow your rules can easily find the data from you. Now, for technical reasons, there's limits to this. And again, this gets back to the design of Bitcoin, which is a lovely quote by Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin takes advantage of the nature of information, being easy to spread, but hard to stifle. If I'm just running a node, some of what it's doing is just spreading that information around. And for technical reasons, it's very nice for us when a lot of different people and a lot of different ISPs run nodes. You know, some of this gets down to nuance. Well, how do we like make sure we're connected to people who want to spread the right type of information? Some of that comes down to things like IP addresses. You know, IP addresses, the first number in your IP address, getting access to a lot of those different first numbers is actually quite hard because you've got to be in around in a lot of different places on the internet. You know, social networks matters too, and you know, we don't do this as much as we should, but there are some improvements coming down the line in Bitcoin where we will make it easy for you to run a node and then connect to your, connect to your friends, quite literally your friends, or maybe you know, businesses like you. That's not quite there yet, but you know, this sort of thing's coming. And again, this is back to the, the information part. And this is, probably leads to, I think, the the most uh, well-known bit about running a node, you see things like the 24-7 nodes. Uh, if I remember correctly, this particular one is a Start9 device. And Start9 does a lot of cool things, but with respect to Bitcoin nodes, it's a little device, a little box, a little computer. You can go buy, you can easily put the software on or use the software it comes with, and it just runs a node 24-7. You hook it up to an internet connection, and it's spreading information around 24-7. And is that good for Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, it's reasonably good for Bitcoin. You're getting the information, making sure it can't be censored, et cetera, et cetera. But as good as that is, and don't get me wrong, I want you to go and get one of these devices if uh, you have the time. You know, I want you to go run a node 24 seven. The thing I really want to talk to is why do you run a node for yourself? You know, all this bit about information and censorship, this is really about why you run a node for other people. Why you run a node for yourself is the other big category of nodes that I think is kind of underappreciated. It's the economic nodes. That is a Bitcoin node, that's my laptop. And if you look real close to the screen, you'll see it's too blurry to actually see, but if you, uh, if you run Bitcoin Core, you probably recognize that uh, log text. And the important thing is Bitcoin 
itself, Bitcoin Core, is just software. If you want to run a node on any computer, you just download it. You just hit go. You let it download a bunch of data as it verifies old blocks. And then before long, you have the current states of the Bitcoin network. And that's the important thing. Your node is actually validating the data that leads to the decision making, really, of what is Bitcoin? Who owns what coins? What are the rules to move those coins around? Those rules are economic rules, and that's why we call these economic nodes. And of course, if you just run the software, that's all well and good, but you can take the next step, which is you use that software with your wallet. And this particular screen here, that's the settings in Wasabi Wallet. And if you look up at uh, the part where it says Bitcoin P2P endpoint, well, in network terminology terms, 127.001, that's your local host, that's your computer itself. So Wasabi, the software, is actually connecting to my node on my laptop, validating that blocks are following the rules by virtue of, the, of my own node. And that means if someone tries to make the rules break or you know screw something up, however they want to go screw something up, my node will reject that. You know, this is ultimately why Bitcoin is not a centralized system, because you all validate the rules. And furthermore, if there's a situation where you need to become valid, you know, you need to start validating the rules, you know, frankly, does every Bitcoin wallet connect to your own node? Well, the answer honestly is no. I mean, I've got nodes, you know, I've got wallets on my phone that I'm not connected to my own nodes. But tomorrow I could. And I could easily do this because I do have multiple nodes and I can easily connect to them if needed. So if push comes to shove, I can fix this problem very quickly. If you have one of those, you know, 24-7 nodes, if there is something that makes you want to go validate, you can easily fix this problem. And that's why running nodes all the time is actually really helpful. And finally, I'll leave with, well, I've talked a whole lot about theory, but where is an example where all this stuff really matters. Where, where could we actually see a reason to run a node where you really should? And it's uh, this dude. I don't know how many of you guys recognize him by his face, but uh, that is Craig Wright, the well-known Australian claiming to be Satoshi. And, you know, I personally am the target of a lawsuit from him, along with uh, like 15-ish other devs and uh, some other organizations and so on. In fact, I actually have two, he's suing me in two different lawsuits. But the first one is, I think, the one that really matters to full nodes. So Craig Wright claims that some hackers got into his office. Those hackers went and stole all his Bitcoin. And then the way they stole the Bitcoin was they copied the private keys. And Craig Wright, to go stop the hackers, deleted all his hard drives. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, if I had hackers steal all my Bitcoin, I certainly would just delete the keys immediately because you never know maybe if we could give, oh, hang on a second. No, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and in fact, you know, the coins that Craig Wright claims to have, they haven't moved since the hack. But, you know, let's ignore that bit. He did apparently delete all his keys. So what are we supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to take all this money and give it to Craig Wright. In fact, he even claims a bunch of coins that, you know, people are pretty sure are actually from Mt. Gox. But I don't know, I guess Craig Wright legitimately bought them or something. Now, what could an outcome of a lawsuit like this be? Well, Craig Wright could get a court order telling everyone, we want you to go and move those coins. Well, what does moving coins mean in the context of Bitcoin? It means we change the rules so that now those coins are Craig Wright's. I want a show of hands. How many people think that Craig Wright really should have his coins back? And how many of these people who run full nodes are actually going to run this new code to uh, give Craig Wright his coins? Come on, let's, let's see this. Are you sure you guys heard me? I don't see any hands up. All right, one, two. Well, you know, that's all well and cool. You, well, all right, you two people can go and uh, run Bitcoin Craig Wright, that's all well and good. As for the rest of you, you can continue using your full nodes, running your software with this, 
and this alternate set of reality just doesn't matter to you. Now, remember what I said, information is hard to stifle or, or easy to spread, hard to stifle. Well, the information about Craig Wright's transactions in this alternate reality, that will spread around too. I mean, Craig Wright can run as many nodes as you want. He could take all of Amazon EC2, run 10,000 nodes. But your nodes will accept that information, look at it and say, yeah, you're not allowed to have that money. That's just not the definition of Bitcoin. And they will drop that information on the floor. Meanwhile, the information that continues to go move Bitcoin around will work just fine. You know, and when you get down to it, like that is why you run a node. This is the difference between Bitcoin and PayPal. PayPal, there is no way for you to know what should happen. You have no idea what PayPal transactions are going on. All you know is that PayPal shows you a screen. Bitcoin, you have that possibility. And you know, yes, a lot of people don't go and run nodes. A lot of people have wallets that don't connect to their own nodes. A lot of wallets are frankly kind of criminally designed and don't even have a way to do this. But when push comes to shove, we can change this quickly. You know, redirecting where wallets go to to get transaction information is not that hard. Adding those new lines of code is not that hard. We can do this in a day or two. And that is why, you know, yes, things aren't perfect. Yes, not everyone actually uses their nodes. But I still want you to run them simply so that if you, can, if you need to, you'll be able to very soon. And, you know, sometimes you may even get to participate in decisions like, do we upgrade Bitcoin protocol? What is even an upgrade to Bitcoin protocol? You know, certainly you have things like hard forks and soft forks where, you know, sometimes we do want the rules to change. Sometimes we want to make the rules stricter. Very occasionally, maybe we want to make the rules less strict. But if you run a node, you do get to participate in all this stuff. So, with all that, how many people think they're going to start running a node tomorrow? Or maybe, you know, next week or so? Like, have I convinced any of you guys? Well, that's good. Well, I think you should go do that. You may want to run a lightning node too. And with that, thank you.